Let's start. Good morning, everybody. I hereby open hearing number two of the 187th regular session of the IHCHR. This hearing is entitled Human Rights of Indigenous Peoples in Argentina, and it was requested by a group of organizations from the civil society. I will say their names, Association of Indigenous Lawyers, AADI, Lawyers of the Northwest Argentina, the Association of Indigenous Women Lawyers, and the Center for Legal and Social Standard Cells. My name is Esmeralda Rosemena de Treitinho. I am the first vice chair for the Inter-American Commission. I would like to greet my colleagues who are here today, Commissioner uh, Julissa Mandilla, Country Rapporteur for Argentina, Commissioner Roberta Clark, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Also present are the hearing are the Deputy Executive Secretary for Promotion for Cooperation and the Special Rapporteur for uh, freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca and Maria Claudia Poli is here. Thank you for all your support for uh, the technical team as well. I would also like to greet the representation of the state of Argentina. Thank you very much for being part of this hearing and accepting our uh, call and the uh, organizations who request this meeting. I would also like to uh, recognize you. I think that there are some groups of the indigenous people that have just entered. I can see Javier. I have not identified him before, so I would also like to read the different representatives of the indigenous groups. As a reminder of the times, we have 20 minutes allocated for each of the parties. I would also like to specially greet our uh, friend, uh, Jan Jaraf. He is the regional representative of the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. Thank you for your support and your presence, as always. And after the presentation by each of the parties, I would, I will ask my colleagues if they will intervene and the special rapporteurs and the Commissioner Dan Jaraf will also have seven minutes after the first presentation by the civil society and the state. The reason for this hearing is also important to highlight, that is the opportunity that the Inter-American Commission has to establish a dialogue and to communicate and to listen to both parties in this uh, problem that is uh, present here for this country for the respect for human rights. So I would like to take this opportunity to hear to the relevant information that the state or the organizations may have on the rights of indigenous peoples, the situation is, part, is especially for the provinces of the Northwest, uh, part of Argentina and the South, which is very much linked to the right to territory and institutional violence. I would also like to say that we have the representation of the rapporteurship of the rights of indigenous people. So I am very much uh, concerned with this topic and we will have the opportunity to listen to you. And uh, so, for the sake of time, we are going to run the floor first to the civil society during 20 minutes. I think that we have a timer. 
I don't know if you can see it on the screen. I cannot see it right now, but this is for you to manage the time effectively. You as the civil society, please, those who take the floor, I would like you to identify yourself for the uh, record and uh, you may also distribute the time among yourselves. Van a presentar primero el video o... Are you going to pass the video first? Bueno, well, okay, you have the floor. Gracias. Well, thank you very much. My name is Manuel Tufro from the uh, Center for Legal and Social Studies, but in order to open uh, this presentation, I will give the floor to Javier Carriqueo from the Mapuche Department. He is speaking in the Mapuche language. I would like to thank you for this uh, space. Uh, we are very much concerned for the situation of uh, in the south. We are from a province in the south of Patagonia. And the Argentinian state incorporated as uh, to these territories for 145 years ago. So there are several territorial conflicts that are related to the distribution and the powers the state had to distribute lands. This has been a characteristic of the 140 years with great or less institutional violence, but the indigenous peoples have had uh, territorial losses and life losses as well. In the last few years, in spite of democracy in the in Argentina, we had two uh, killings, one by uh, the police in Argentina, Nahuel, Rafael Nahuel, and in 2021, the murder of Elias Garay in uh, territorial vindication. And we also requested the IACHR for a precautionary measure, measure and none of those interventions were possible and Elias Garay today is dead. Extractivism, and I think that we have to underscore this, is what imposes violence and the need of the state to advance on the territory so as to generate resources, so as to pay for illegal debt or to create well-being in societies that are not ours. So facing this overview, we need to organize and to self-organize and to resist the violence of the state where there is no indigenous justice, there, there is no prior inform and free consent and there is no uh, granting of community title and this uh, results in a very important conflict. I don't want to extend so I'm going to give now the floor to Jorge Nahueli Penny from the commission. Greeting in his language. Thank you for giving me the floor. My name is Jorge Nahuel from the Mapuche Confederation of Neuquén, which is the Patagonian region. I would like to reaffirm the words by me, my colleague. And this year it's been 40 years of the recovery of democracy. And it's been 40 years of accumulation of a debt to the... Uh, indigenous peoples of Argentina and we have a constitution which is solid and we also have provincial constitutions that um, highlight the obligation of the state to be up to date with our debt. Uh, we need the uh, territory certainty and we lack it now. We have an emergency program which was approved 16 years ago, but it is not being applied because there is no political willingness by the provincial government and there is no a firm decision by the national state to comply with that law. So this law is an emergency law, um, but it does not address the collective property of the land 
and it's the Congress that does not approve this law and the provincial governments that also don't want to reassert it. We They want us to be a prey of extractivism. Our territories are threatened. Our territories have a lot of, uh, of wealth that the land granted us, the earth, the mother earth granted us, but today it is a... Uh, the uh, subject of the extractivism that wants to destroy our culture. So it's essential for you to understand that we are under a state of threat and it's important to intervene and to make the national and provincial st state to comply with the responsibilities. The consultation right was approved at a uh, provision level, but at the national level, it is still in force. Yesterday, a great gas attack was, a gas pipeline was, um, uh, was launched, and we are going to suffer the consequences of that project that leaves contamination, pollution, earthquakes, our territories are invaded and uh, that is why we foster this dialogue to happen and uh, several urgent measures have to be taken. I am going to pass the floor to Manuel Grufo from the cells so that he can uh, also say some words. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Jorge. From the CELS, the Center for Legal and Social Studies, we would like to focus on an aspect that has to do with the structural racism and its violences, the, the violence. This is a historical debt in Argentina, but it's also institutional racism that is present in the police and in the um, government officials in their day-to-day -day practice. In the last few years, it have been uh, episodes of extreme violence in provinces such as Chaco, Formosa, Jujuy, Rio Negro, Chubut, Formosa, Nauquén, even with people who were dead, resulted dead or severely damaged. Some people were transferred to the capital cities and then they were taken back to their provinces and they were accused of a crime that in any other situation would be would not be, they would not have to be in custody. This situation has been aggravated by political sex sectors that um, claim for a reprisal, violent reprisal of indigenous peoples. And they say that indigenous are terrorists. These political sectors today govern several uh, provinces in Argentina and they may take office uh, at the end of the year. They, uh, if they win the elections, they, these are the same uh, uh, political sectors that governed during 2015 and 2019, and they carried out illegal espionage um, uh, during those years. The racist campaigns carried out by the media intensified as to the recovery of the ancestral territory and the defense of the common goods. So this is a reaction which is anchored in economic sectors under the flag of the uh, national sovereignty does not admit any policy of reparation to indigenous people. These uh, indigenous activism intensified during this few years because the Argentinian state does not comply with the assumed commitments. The access to justice is also hindered for indigenous people because even the sentences that are favorable are um, appealed or are not complied with. Some areas of the administration, public and national administration, deploy these institutional racism and some uh, government officials have been brought to trial so for, so as, uh, for not complying with these laws. They have made great, great efforts to reach an agreement for Villa Mascardi and in the implementation of the Inter-American Court sentence, but several provincial governments and other areas of the national state, such as the Ministry of Defense, 
have carried out uh, judicial activism against indigenous people. So we call upon the Argentinian state to modify these practices and to recognize the rights of indigenous people. In the case of the national state, this has to start with the dissolution of the command of uh, federal forces in Rio Negro, whose exis existence is a stigmatizing me message for the communities in the area and to multiply the uh, debate table in Villa Mascardi. We are also going to request the commission to pay attention to the situation of indigenous people in Argentina since some political sectors that promote racist agenda may access to the government, national government in the short term. I will pass the floor to Julio Garcia. Good morning, commissioners and the state of Argentina and my colleagues. In Argentina, there's a legal framework based on the Constitution of 1994, which incorporated Article 75 and, and other articles to ratify the Convention of the ILO with uh, schemes such as Law 1032, which is pre-constitutional, and the political organization of Argentina that also incorporates um, out-of-date uh, legal schemes that have not been uh, discussed or challenged by any of the provincial nor the national states. So there's this framework aligned with an ideological framework with in which indigenous peoples are seen as passive subjects of uh, public policies. That is <coughs> is a hardship for the recognition of territorial rights for indigenous peoples this situation entails that for all for all the 50 indigenous peoples that inhabit argentina and the more than 1000 indigenous communities there's a constant threat in a way they have tried to simplify or attack or, or, or maybe a, a sanction a, a bill that was passed in 2006, but that was ratified and extended ever, ever, every four years. And as my colleagues who preceded me said, this is not enough because legal uh, judicial operators who are under the pressure of this political agents and media agents are constantly delegitimizing the rights of indigenous people. So this existence of both legal uh, frameworks have allowed to not include the rights of, uh, for example, the Guarani people in the province of Misiones, or that in provinces such as Chaco, in a reserve of more than 3,100 hectares, 300,000 hectares, uh, there's a population that has not the rights uh, secured. And this is the same in the province of Mendoza. So in this, emergency situation this bill is not enough and we need the national state to continue uh, to start implementing structural public policies public policies where the territories of indigenous peoples are part of the public agenda and the political agenda of the national government and the provincial governments as it has done in different fields where state organizations uh, have uh, engaged. Well, we need to strengthen those agencies so that the, the commitment of Argentina before the indigenous communities is complied with and also to, com to comply with the international treaties such as the ILO Convention, which is uh, super legal 
uh, regulation that is applied in Argentina and so that the territories of the stakeholding uh, communities are respected and also in, with regard to extractivist policies uh, article 15 of the ILO convention that refers to re natural resources should be complied with also there's a, an obligation on the part of the inter-american court in february 6 2020 ruling related to reparations they it establishes that the argentinian state had to provide legal safety to community ownership of the land for indigenous peoples, uh, providing specific schemes, and this has not been implemented to comply with the ruling. Thank you very much. I give the floor to Sandra Ceballos. Thank you. Good morning, members of the Inter-American Commission, experts and colleagues. We will be referring from AMAI, the Association of Women uh, Indigenous Lawyers, to a specific uh, right, which is the right to be consulted each time the state will take a legislative or administrational uh, measure. This consultation norm is the, stone, the, the corner store of, of this ILO convention. The duty of the states to consult indigenous communities is contemplated as is enshrined in the main international instruments, for example, the 169 ILO Convention and the Universal Declaration of Indigenous Peoples. These instruments state that the, con the purpose of the consultation is to obtain agreement on the part of the communities. And in several articles, that previous informed consultation is uh, emphasized. We will refer to the recommendations that the Argentinian Republic has received. The uh, DESCA committee in 2018 of the, uh, the United Nations uh, was concerned for the infringement of this right to free and prior consultation and recommended that indigenous communities were to be systematically consulted with the purpose of uh, obtaining that agreement, that consultation. Also, the committee recommended the member state that in order to apply this right to consultation to put into practice the protocols that have already been drafted by different communities and indigenous peoples. For example, Kachiyupi, that was uh, developed by the Kosha Atacama communities of the Wayatayok region, and also the procedure of previous informed consultation to indigenous communities that should be applied to implement administrative measures that are going to affect them. Also, there's a protocol in the province of Neuquén to be applied to indigenous communities within the federal system at the national and the provision levels, extractivism has not been avoided and, and its negative consequences for indigenous communities and territories has not been uh, avoided. The fracking threat, for example, the mega mining, uh, monoculture, for, forest in the industry insists on uh, evicting and criminalizing communities. Also in January this year, the task group of the United Nations on Businesses and Human Rights stated in its declaration that national states and provincial states should guarantee that peoples are systematically consulted with the aim of obtaining their agreement, that are their consent. And also the special rapporteur of the United Nations on the rights of indigenous peoples that visited different regions of the country also requested especially the state of Jujuy to develop norms and policies that are in line with indigenous rights in a process that respects the right to prior free and informed consent. Having said this, we can mention as an example, the Salinas Grandes and Lagunas de Guayatayoc working group that have been working ever since 2009 to because they see a, a danger of having mining and lithium companies that are causing serious consequences on the provision of water that is so serious that it would affect two provinces salta and jujuy because they are amidst a 
water basin. So they are very active. They are denouncing the lack of prior in, uh, informed and free consultation and the Escazú agreement, despite the fact that they are both part of the legal framework that is in place in Argentina. In the province of Fujuy, as uh, the Andes colleague will uh, tell you, there's a great social tension because they have been reporting that in the face of the partial reform and amendment of the provincial consult uh, constitution, the, pro the communities of Jujuy were not consulted. I am from Jujuy and I can assure you that most of Jujuy's inhabitants look like this. We are descendants of indigenous communities and there has been a reform uh, just overnight. You must have seen the images of the repression that took place in the province of Fujui. So lastly, and to conclude, I want to remind you that James Anasha, who was rapporteur of the United Nations, referred to consultation and its linkage with the principle of the prior and informed consent as a central point for a new model of relationships between the states and indigenous communities and also for a new development model. Thank you very much. I give the floor to my colleague from Andes. I think you have run out of time, unfortunately. So the video, maybe we can show it in the final minutes of the hearing. I'm sorry, I give the floor now immediately to the representatives of the state of Argentina. Thank you very much, Madam Pres Chair. Uh, good morning, greetings to all of you, and thank you on the behalf of the state of Argentina for the calling and for the invitation of participating in such an important hearing. The state also thanks the petitioners for their presentation. Madam Chair, the promotion and protection of human rights of the indigenous communities is highly relevant in the policy of human rights of the state of Argentina. Today, before this illustrious commission, there's a high level delegation of the human rights secretariat represented by Horacio Piedra Galacorti, the National Indigenous Affairs Institute, and its president, Alejandro Marmoni, and the Foreign Affairs Ministry, uh, represented by the ambassador, Carlos, Ra Carlos Raimundi, alongside their technical teams in line with the regulation, with the rules. So I give the floor to Human Rights Secretary Horacio Pietragala Corti. Thank you. Good morning, can you hear me? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Also, I greet the Executive Secretariat of the Inter-American Commission and the uh, associations and organizations that requested this public hearing. The, the Institute of In Indigenous Affairs will refer to the pol public policies that they are conducting to guarantee the specific rights of the indigenous communities in Argentina. My exposition will be focused on a general aspect. As a general, as a national government, we have the political commitment to address the claims of indigenous communities to promote the peaceful resolution of conflicts. This is our horizon as an uh, administration. This was one of the commitments that we took recently when we recognized the Human Rights uh, Convention of the UN. Through the workers of the Secretariat and the institutes and other organizations, we uh, took this commitment. This also entails hearing uh, the claims and to understand them and to act consequently. And also this means to uh, go back in because a few years ago the national state did quite the opposite. It took the path to stigmatize and be violent with the people. It's one example that was mentioned by the uh, people that requested this hearing is the case of Visha Mascardi, where uh, Rafael Nahuel was murdered amidst a, a ferocious repression. We condemn that uh, event and we are uh, 
part of the legal case promoting the investigation the, of, of the events. We will uh, address this impunity. Our current administration has been working with the community uh, Lafkin Mapu in the province of Rio Negro. The president received the community and the president of the Institute of Indigenous Affairs to uh, work on this conflict through dialogue to respect the rights of indigenous peoples. This is what we did. We had three months of dialogue in this year with representatives of the organizations that were involved and the representatives of the communities. At the last working meeting in June, we reached important agreements that allowed us to uh, understand the conflict and to uh, repair the uh, infringed rights of the communities. In June the 1st, we reached four agreements. First, the national state will um, work with the community so that uh, communities can exercise their spiritual and medicinal uh, activities freely and we will manage the uh, the territories, the, the, the conflict with the territories of the peoples. Also, we will grant legal status before the in Institute of Indigenous Affairs. Also, we will enable different offices of different uh, governmental agencies, such as the Human Rights Secretariat, to meet with the indigenous communities. These agreements were presented as uh, an, a friendly settlement. And this is why the women who had been detained based on those criminal uh, proceedings were released. So Madam President and dear commissioners, it's necessary now that I focus on something that is concerning for us and that we regret deeply. I refer to the situation of the indigenous community in the province of Jujuy, which is one of the provinces with the most amount of indigenous inhabitants. Even the commission echoed this situation. There was a constitutional reform that took place in the province that did not have the uh, required deliberations. That reform acknowledged the rights of the participation of indigenous communities, but that was not complied with. So uh, workers and indigenous communities went to the streets and the response of the governor was a cruel repression going against all rights of integrity, legal protection, defense, freedom of expression, and freedom of association of these communities. That is unacceptable. And this is why we have met with INAI, the Permanent Assembly of Human Rights, and uh, other groups. We met with the prosecutor. And we demanded the uh, liberation of the de detainees. And also we met with a boy who was shot in the eye and who lost sight of that eye. Political violence is never the answer. So we presented a legal action to protect the rights of the demonstrators. And we th there was a recommendation to have a mediation so that police officers uh, respect the rights of the demonstrators. We visited the injured at the hospital and the detainees. And we, um, we are also... Uh, claimants of this report. Madam President and dear commissioners, in order to conclude, I want to uh, repeat our commitment to advance in the guarantee of specific rights of indigenous communities and its and their organizations. This is why we are happy to announce that last Friday, Argentina presented the plan of work and action to comply with the ruling of the Inter-American Court. 
This is why something and and among the uh, the rulings, there are actions to demarcate uh, thousands of hectares that must be given back through a friendly settlement with the peasant uh, families and indigenous communities. Also, we established uh, definitions on community uh, entitlement, uh, rules to solve conflicts, uh, and management of ter territories that are in conflict. Also, there's um, uh, a process to uh, relocate uh, peasant communities and uh, granting them machinery, tools, uh, and, and services. Another uh, pillar is the improvement of the quality of life so that people can have access to water and to uh, have uh, food sovereignty respected. This was led by the Secretariat and involved uh, 20 organizations from all levels of the country who took different commitments to repair victims of uh, social rights infringement. Madam President and Commissioners, I want to thank the Inter-American System for their support to, to protect the specific rights of indigenous communities and peoples and thank you very much and i'm sorry but i forgot my glasses and i cannot uh, see very well good morning com commissioners madam president members of organizations brothers and sisters i would also like to greet the inter-american commission and their uh, petitioners and I would like to thank for this call so as to inform on the situation of the rights of indigenous people, their communities and their situation in the country as uh, the representative of the body that governs the indigenous rights. I'm going to um, respond to some of the issues raised. The idea is not to exhaust his pillars, but we are at your disposal so as to provide more information today or on, in writing afterwards. So first is one in relation to the territory, Madam President, Madam Commissioners, um, Commissioners, we share your concern and also the frustration of the requesting organizations as to the lack of uh, community property law in Argentina. But it's important to establish which is the political, adverse political context our country is living in terms of the indigenous people, their communities and organizations. Today, we have a reaction full of uh, discriminatory discourses and speeches against indigenous people that come from the political op opposition and some institutional spaces. The genocide was even re uh, vindicated, and the rejection of the identity of indigenous people was also done. Uh, the right to self identification as indigenous, as the members of indigenous people, and as members of our communities, this is warranted in the treaties, in the national constitution, and in the laws. These same regressive speeches have prevailed in Congress in 2021 for the first year the law 26 160 could not be prorogued or could not be extended we know this is an emergency law but it's the only one we have in terms uh, so as to stop the evictions after 15 years the law of in territorial emergency for indigenous people have to be extended by the president, by decree. This is what we mean when we talk about an adverse context in order to legislate. But I would like to um, reassure our commitment. And um, we've also done this before. We know that the Inter-American Commission and the requesting organizations carry out an enormous job 
so as to create a forum for discussion that leads us to a transformative um, all outcome in this topic. The law 26, 160, together with the program of um, territory of servid of territories. In 2021, this was the second time in its history that the program had a special fund of 2,090 uh, million pesos. And these, in general terms, in 2020, we have started to reverse the fall in real terms of the budget. I would also like to remind you that since uh, 2016 to 2020, the budget of the program was reduced several times as from 2021, we have recovered the levels of investment of, um, of 2017. And in 2022, these amount was dub doubled. Obviously, there is a lot of work ahead of us, but I would like to share some of the developments of the program and how is it that we understand it from the National Institute. We would like to say as a background that at the beginning of the program in 2018, the universe of communities identified by the national state was 950. Today, we have identified 1,887 communities and we have surveyed 928 indigenous communities, um, taking into consideration the number of com in communities identified, we have executed more than 90%. This clarification is important because we generally take as a comparison point the last universe, uh, which is from uh, an eight, 1,000, 1,837. Another important aspect is the modality of the execution of the service. In the Institute, we have done a policy of co-execution agreements of the service together with the provinces. This has to do with the ideas of concurrent powers our constitution grants us. In, 20, in between 2020 and 2023, eight new agreements with were signed with jurisdictions. Out of the community survey, 928 have their survey completely uh, finished, and this recognizes their occupation. 300 communities have, have to be still surveyed. Law 26, 160 installed the first public policy for the recognition of the, of the complaints of indigenous peoples. There was uh, no knowledge as to the organization of the indigenous communities of the country. This law was added to the reassertion of indige of the identity of indigenous people. These broad processes of organization of the communities, the self-recognition and the um, avoidance of this position. The universe of indigenous peoples that comprehends those that are registered and those that are not is a variable that uh, was uh, improved in the last few years. I would like to refer now to the reprisal and the criminalization of the communities and their access to justice. Obviously, we can provide information about a particular case which was mentioned, but I would I like to say in the Institute that we intervened together with the Secretary of Human Rights in the act of institutional violence, as it has just been said in relation to the criminal cases, we provide um, advice to the communities with the objective to warranty the application of the rules. The communities can have access to professionals that are specialized in indigenous uh, rights. Through these programs, the communities have access to the legal defense and the legal advice in certain cases and to the criminalization of, uh, to avoid the criminalization of their members. 
360 communities of 17 indigenous people distributed in six provinces are um, raised or are comprehended by this. We are aware of the need that the institutions need to take into account the opinion of indigenous peoples. That is why we created a specific area with a, a specific scope of this, and we intervene with different complaints uh, related to agrotoxic. The Institute also signed a framework agreement with the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development so as to establish an approach as to the activities in relation to the preservation of the biological diversity and sustainable development focusing on interculturality. Madam President, Commissioners, I would like to thank uh, you for uh, supporting uh, the indigenous communities of Jujuy and of the rest of the country. And we'd also like to acknowledge the uh, petitioners of the hearings that have worked defending the rights of the communities. This is the end. Thank you. What We are at your disposal. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. We are now going to grant the floor to Mr. Jan Jarav, regional representative of the High Commissioner Office of the United Nations for Human Rights. Thank you, Jan. You have the floor. Muchas gracias, estimada presidenta. De la Thank you. Dear President of the Inter-American Commission, Commissioners, representatives of the delegation of the Argentine state leaders, indigenous leaders and persons of human rights defenders, good morning to all of you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you representing the Office of the High Commissioner. And today I would like to give to the Commission oral information under um, oath. The office is concerned by the structural discrimination suffered by indigenous people in Argentina and for situations of institutional violence together with the stereotypes in the media and the lack of visibility and recognition of the injustice suffered by these peoples. Argentinian indigenous peoples are still among the most marginal communities of the countries and they suffer important hindrances in terms of economic and social rights, in terms of the right to health, to education and access to labor market. The team of the United Nations in Argentina uh, supported the emergency decree in the Salda province after the witchy uh, children that died for malnutrition in 2020. There are also several concerns in terms of conflicts over territory and lands in some provinces of the country, the indigenous communities are under the interest of mining, monocultural interest among others. So it is extremely relevant for Argentina to have a legal mechanism for prior inform and free consent and consultation as uh, it should by uh, as it is stipulated by convention 169 of the ILO we should mention some advances the government created an institu institutional unit for the implementation of the uh, sent, uh, of the judgment of the inter-american court uh, with the objective of the devolution of indigenous lands and uh, reparation to some compensation to some indigenous people. This, this 
and become a benchmark for other Argentinian communities and uh, in other countries. Decree law number 805 of year 90, 2021 established a new extension of law 26160 until November 2025 to continue with the survey and to continue with the marcation processes in all the provinces. The law suspends the execution of judgments that decide to evict indigenous peoples. However, what is concerning is that it extension, this extension was established as only uh, uh, with um, a decree law by the executive that can be modified by another uh, executive decree. Um, the territorial service should continue and should come to an end. The self-identification of indigenous people was also asked by the census, and this can facilitate the development of public policies. The office has followed the violation of civil and political rights of people and indigenous people in Argentina, uh, and the restriction of Pacific meeting and the excessive use of force in the context of protest or in a different one. It is very relevant. Well, the four cases that are very important that have been followed by the office. First, discriminatory treatment and discriminatory use of force by the provincial agents uh, against the Qom community leaders in the province of Chaco the excessive use of force and the transportation of indigenous witchy leaders within the framework of the response to the pandemic in the province of Formosa, Formosa in January 2021. Arbitrary detention and criminalization of Mapuche women. One woman was pregnant and two little children in October 2022 in the community Mapuche community La Filicueco in Rio Negro where several indigenous people were evicted and the restriction uh, through the constitutional reform of Jujuy and the use of excessive uh, the excessive use of forces and the aggression towards indigenous people in the province of Jujuy. As to the, the office has requested for the respect of human rights, indicating the need to have a transparent dialogue in the country. I would like to end underscoring the need that the Argentine state could have a uh, comprehensive policy to attend to the demands of the indigenous people and to work collectively so as to address the um, concerns hereby expressed. I reiterate our willingness to cooperate with the Argentinian state for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have a few minutes for the comments by commissioners of the Inter-American Commission. I will first give the floor to country reporter, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla. Thank you very much, Madam President and Madam Chair. Uh, greetings to representatives of the civil society organizations and the state and to my colleagues. And of course, our dear friend, Jan Jarab, who always takes part in these hearings. There are several issues that have been brought up. This is a hearing on human rights of indigenous peoples in Argentina. And I know that all these issues of prior consultation and protests in Jujuy 
will continue to be discussed uh, in in the questions posed by the commissioners. But I want to pose a specific, concrete question both to both parties. I would like you to submit information on the uh, reports and effective actions by civil society organizations and the state against ancestral practices uh, that are known as chineo. I know you know what I mean, but for those of you who don't know what this is, chineo consists in a uh, practice of violating, of raping indigenous women and chil and children. This comes from the word chinita, which was the 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 word that was uh, allocated to indigenous girls because of the, the shape of their eyes as a Chinese people. So as a result, many children have, have lost their lives. For example, Alejandra Sebrelli and Rita Segato have been uh, researching, investigating this practice. So I want to ask, how are you addressing this issue, this this topic? Because when this chineo happens, um, where uh, men, white men, rape girls and women, and also how you address sexual rapes within the communities themselves, what, what do you do in those cases? And also, I would like to greet, I, I forgot to greet the ambassador, but uh, from the state, I would like to get information on what is the response that you are giving? There's a very erect, renowned uh, condemnation of this witchy girl, but within the this system, what is the particular policy that you are applying? Because many times the response is, well, no, this is an intercultural practice, but here there's a state responsibility to this issue. So I would like to know what is the response in the face of these practices such as Chineo? Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well, I give the floor now to Commissioner Roberta Clark. If you have any questions or comments. Thank you, Commissioner Arosemena. And good, uh, I think we're still in the morning. Good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning, Ambassador. Uh, just one or two questions for uh, both sides. Um, I understand the, the, the overarching issue is the legacy and in fact, the contemporary reality of structural um, discrimination, structural racism, which shows up in violence against uh, uh, indigenous peoples and with impunity, with limited justice. It shows up in um, uh, denial of <clears throat> access to collective territory and also the alienation of collective territory for the purposes of private enterprise, particularly in the extractive industry. And then um, uh, both uh, both sides spoke about um, uh, racist campaigns or stereotyping, um, uh, which uh, this which stigmatizes indigenous peoples and also undermines uh, their equal dignity in the context of popular imagination. And so I wanted to to maybe focus in on the on the the the, the racist campaigns and to ask uh, the representatives of the indigenous peoples here, you spoke about racist campaigns in the media, and I would like to know a little bit more about those campaigns in the media and how do they, um, uh, how do they dem manifest themselves? And, and of, to the state, I would like to ask the question about legislation or regulation of hate speech, whether or not Argentina has a legislative framework that will provide, that will prevent um, racist speech that exposes communities to discrimination and violence. And if it does have uh, legislation, how are you implementing uh, that? And then finally, I, I, I want to thank the uh, representative of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, whose, uh, I think his final statement was a question of needing a comprehensive policy addressing the rights of indigenous people. Um, the state did speak about many initiatives, but I suppose that those initiatives may not capture the range of issues being of, that are affecting indigenous people. So I wanted to also find out from the state 
um, what are the plans for the development of a comprehensive policy to secure the rights of Indigenous peoples? Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Bernal. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for the opportunity of posing a question. I also would like to greet warmly the people who requested this hearing and the, the members of the indigenous, indigenous communities and their representatives, the state representatives, and also the United Nations rapporteur. My question is very specific, very concrete. I heard, and also the documents at the he of the hearing read as follows. Um, one important problem brought here is the uh, the possible violation of the right to prior consultation for both communities. At least the communities speak of some cases in which the consultation had to be carried out and it was not. So my specific question addressed to the state representatives is divided into two. The first part is why did the prior consultation did not take place? And also if there are rules for prior consultation to provide uh, safety for all stakeholders, not only to indigenous communities, of course, that's priority, but also to other uh, agents such as companies or people who would like to develop different projects. So if there is any specific um, project, project as to that. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Deska, Rapporteurship, do you have any specific comments you would like to make? Yes. Thank you very much, Madam, Pres Madam Chair, Vice President of the Commission. Uh, special greetings to the Commission members and other colleagues of the uh, Rapporteurship for Freedom of Expression and representatives of the State of Argentina and civil society organizations. A small comments and a few questions. The state and civil society have referred to the importance of having indigenous peoples participating in the drafting and developing of the country. In our report on businesses and human rights, we introduced a series of criteria that have to be taken into account by the states when they uh, implement public policies and measures on this matter. So I think this is key at this hearing and has to um, result in us understanding that a sustainable re uh, development is key. So I would like to know how indigenous peoples have been engaged in the state's policies on the matter of businesses and human rights. The working group of this area, when it visited Argentina, noticed the permanent risky situation for indigenous peoples in Argentina. So it's fundamental for those peoples to have a very active participation in this matter. Secondly, the need for the participation of indigenous peoples on measures by the state of Argentina as regards combating the climate emergency. I have not heard many details of these, so it would be very interesting for me to hear about that if there's any details. And also I would like to point to two situations that we introduced in our report in 2022 that are very concerning. One of them has to do with the situation of Ouija indigenous children in the province of Salta in a series of municipalities because they do not have access to health, uh, drinkable water and, and education. Also, at least uh, more than 7,500 children of those communities were in nutritional risk. I think this is a very concerning point of uh, information. And also we call the attention on some events related to Minerales Australis S.A., this company, and the situation of Adalgala in the province of Catamarca. If you have any specific information that you could provide, it would be very welcomed. And of course, I congratulate the state of Argentina for the advancements in 
as regards the LACA Juntat ruling uh, compliance. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Soledad. Rapporteur, Special Rapporteur Pedro. I, I was going to say Commissioner. <laughs> just a few minutes so i can speak at, at the end yes good morning special greetings for all participants the freedom of expression is a key right for democracy and and this is why it's very concerning that at this hearing you have spoken about racist discourses and campaigns as it was pointed out by commissioner clark so some specific questions first i would like to uh ask from civil society organizations uh, for some examples of uh, racist manifestations of public officials and uh, media. Also to ask the state if they have any prevention measures and what they are to prevent racism in the state of Argentina. Also, I would like to question this, to, to ask a question to the state since there's an election coming uh, if whether the election system has any measures to prevent this racism from uh, political leaders and also a question for civil society organization what is your um understanding of the engagement of indigenous communities in public debate do you have your own uh media do you have access to uh to means of communication because one of the th very important things here is the voices of the people that have been historically discriminated so thank you very much madam chair for for allowing me the space thank you me as in my role as a reporter for indigenous communities rights i thank my colleagues because you have already uh, spoke to very specific issues so I want to echo uh, Soledad and Chantarab, who pointed to the situation of children and adolescents in these uh, regions, which require protection and also a, a comprehensive response. Specifically, as a rapporteur for the rights of children and adolescents, I would like to have this information. If you don't have it, at the moment at hand you can maybe send that send that um and this is for both parties of this hearing secondly about justice systems organizations civil society organizations have very specifically pointed to the big hurdles that the justice systems are imposing for them to claim for their rights. So I would like to, to have information on what's related to justice and how uh, civil society organizations who, who are experts on this and also um, indigenous peoples, how they are engaging with the justice system to claim for the rights. Do you have, uh, have you have, have you identified those obstacles? And this is situation of course, that calls for uh, an analysis so that as to know what is the situation in terms of access to justice, uh, um, taking into account this cultural uh, adequacy and also what was posed by the state, which is an adverse outlook, an adverse context within the society of Argentina, which is denying the identity and denying spaces for uh, indigenous peoples. So that is something that we require. Um, we have to establish what are the mechanisms, effective mechanisms that we could implement, both the civil society and the, the indigenous groups themselves and the state to ensure what Commissioner Roberta and Pedro spoke about 
whether if there's a reality of discrimination, even public um, uh, discrimination by these groups, which could be part of politics or not, but this has to be followed up to be able to provide an adequate response. And lastly, as regards the constitutional reform in Jujuy, I got to know the province of Jujuy. I was able to visit Salta as well, and I I was um, I was very in touch with the reality, as Sandra was saying, the reality of the peoples. So while this is a response on a single state, on, on a single province, sorry, what's the position of Argentina as a country to address a constitutional denial of human rights? What is the approach of the country in that matter? So that would be the end of my comments. And I can give now the floor back to civil society and to the state as well. If you cannot address all the questions, um, we ask you to send to submit the information afterwards. So now I give the floor back to civil society organizations. I see Sandra had uh, risen her hand or Manuel. The communities of Jujuy who cannot be here because they are struggling, they recorded a video and they want us to show you this video. So we are going to give charity to this. So we are going to give the floor to Bettina Martinez. Bettina Martinez from... Jujuy, and as my colleague was saying, and in response to the questions asked by the petitioners, in the province of Jujuy, there are over 60 indigenous communities who are uh, uh, demonstrating in uh, road number 50, 59, and these communities have sent us a video that we would like to pass here. I'm going to share the screen now. And you let me know if you can see it. Thank you. Jujuy is a province with over 400 communities. Eight years ago, yeah, for eight years, it has been governed by Gerardo Morales, who approved constitutional reform without complying with the inform and prior and free concern. This reform, which was approved in 20, the, 20 days, is to grant resources to the transnational companies. This has been done for a few decades, but it's being approved. People were shot. Uh, women and elderly people were detained in custody and today they criminalize any person who demonstrate against this reform. In Jujuy, there is no division of power. Everything is controlled by the governor, the media, the executive, judiciary and legislative branches uh, persecute us. They are persecuting us and today we have no warranties of uh, justice. That is why we insist that the nullity of the new constitutional, uh, the, the new province constitution has to be uh, done. And this violates the rights of indigenous people. We hereby request a new bill to be carried out for the reform of the constitution, the constitution amendment, so as to comply with our national constitution, with the free prior and informed consent and consultation according to the 169 ILO con the convention. And the other international treaties ratified by Argentina, we 
ask for the people to be absolved in those people who participated in uh, the demonstrations, all those who are in custody and all those people who participate in the different activities against the uh, reform. We ask judges and the members of the judiciary of Jujuy to be aware of the reality and the gravity of the situation of the peoples of Jujuy. They have to be unbiased as they sweared upon when they took the, the office. Thank you. And I would also like to add that in the NGO Andes, we are um, advising a group of indigenous community to ask for the nullity of this amendment process, which was done without free, prior, and informed consent. Several indigenous communities have appeared with different memos to require for uh, the complaint to request the informed prior uh, consent. We also have uh, presented a Navius Corpus uh, read to protect the communities in the regions of Purmamarca and the other uh, jurisdictions. I will now give the floor to some of the representatives of the civil society. Well, in order to address some of the question posed and the, they have to protect the rights of indigenous people because we are not here speaking of the genocide of indigenous people in Argentina, not only we're speaking about structural racism, but also the appropriation of territories and institutional violence that has marked us. So when we hear the response of the state, which is the Secretary of Human Rights, in order to reach a dialogue, the working group, we had to wait eight months and what they don't say is that the Minister of Environment is the one who is denying the access to uh, lands in the conflict of Kewinkul. Even though we could free women, this is a very violent process where racism, judiciary race, racism and the uh, political power are evident. The communities needed to have a legal person characteristics. This is not in the law. We had to negotiate with the women who were in custody with their children. And today, the houses are not built. Machi cannot exert their spirituality. The lands that, that are offered are 10 hectares only. So I think that we have to talk about extractivism here. What happens in Jujuy is also what is happening in the South. Here we have lithium, we have a green hydrogen project, a port, a, a gas pipeline, all of these in community territory to an external company they were offered a thousand hectares and we are killed for 10 hectares. So what is um, the at risk here is democracy in Argentina. And this has to this has to do with the extractivism. So the uh, state does not respect the right to consultation because if we don't want mining, well, there should not be mining. So which is a warranty for that compliance? We are uh, we are being killed, so we have the right to be defended. Some years ago, we filed a grid of empire against the mining companies because they did not defree prior and informed consent, the Rio Negro 
province said no the mining code has more it's more valid than international treaties in argentina we have not been consulted upon for the green hydrogen or for the granting of community territories the government say that they don't know whether the communities are there or not because there is no survey the survey is not finished because the state does not uh, invest in uh, it's it's not it does not have a budget so it is not enough how is it going to be respected in Jujuy when they have done operations they uh, detain people they use uh, cars to uh, kidnap people like in the dictatorship we are our telephones are um intervened we are persecuted by the police so this is very serious in terms of human rights so it is not enough the explanation the state has given is not enough it is not enough because it's us who are um resisting when we claim for the mining companies not to access well we do have the right to answer to those violent processes in the territory so we are facing a very complex situation and i think that we have to address it with more in a solid way we call the inter-american commission and it never acts so what is it that we come here are we here to make cathar catharsis it is we who have to raise our dead bodies and to bury them there is uh, we have the right to reveal to answer with violence to the violence imposed by the state the situation cannot be like this it is very serious and we have to start speaking the truth this is a result of the colonization and the fifth 500 years of violence and conquest because potassi uh, is the same as the lithium or the green hydrogen and we the indigenous community cannot pay for the costs of the progress of other communities okay unfortunately we have run out of time <laughs> the idea for the hearing javier is uh, to talk about the problems the conflicts and that's our work our job to try to achieve effective dialogue mechanisms and this is one that we have to keep on fostering so that the dialogue is sincere, serious, productive, and reliable. I am going to run the floor for 12 minutes to the representation of the state. Thank you. I would like to thank you for all the observations, remarks, and comments, and we will try to give some answers to what was recently expressed as to the genocide the state has made concrete actions for its acknowledgement in my role as president of the, this body in different instances we are doing some acknowledgement actions that maybe they are incomplete but we are historically recognizing what the genocide was for the constitution of the national state from that point of view we see with much concern the different actions persecutory actions and xenophobia in terms of indigenous matters and especially on the Mapuche people. I would like to express what happened in the case of the province of Mendoza. I took office as the president of the Institute 
in December last year, the first resolutions were signed in January 2023 by me. And in those resolutions, three, uh, over three, I received criminal uh, complaints. And that is the context of criminalization, not in terms of the demonstration, but they criminalize actions on what I, on which I have the competence to sign. What was denounced was to the signing of the resolution, even though the process was done as it was done since 2016, all the administrative steps were complied with. Nonetheless, In the resolution of three Mapuche communities in Mendoza, it was used politically and by the media to re-vindicate, to vindicate what was the, the, the genocide process. The presence of the Mapuche people was denied in the south of the province of Mendoza and we got to a case of very much of a great concern where they denied the Mapuche people in Mendoza. The criminal actions carve the actions of the state officials. And this reinforces the commitment we have in this government to take reparation actions on the uh, indig on the rights of indigenous peoples. Here we saw the reprisal against Jujuy, which which started in Purva Marca. We and the news that got to Buenos Aires were quite confusing. They talked about death, about people in hospital. We did not have official information. We did uh, we we did a great effort to have the official information, but we had the commitment to um, to support those complaints and the secretary took direct action so as to see the situation of the detainees. First in Purma Marca and then in the uh, San Salvador Square. We were, we spoke with the um, people so as to uh, have important information. After this, we received here in Buenos Aires some delegations that in the organization of the demonstration in Purma Marca, not in the one in La Quiaca, the president received us in his house where they could tell how, how were the characteristic of the reprisal actions. Similar to the Viejo Malón de la Paz and giving uh, expressing his disagreement on the uh, constitutional amendment if, even though the provincial government uh, did circulate some documents that have nothing to do with the, this consent process we um, requested the inconstitutionality, the unconstitutionality of these, and this was done a few weeks ago. As to the recommendations, there was another answer posed by the commissioner as to the media. Unfortunately, this context is in an electoral uh context uh, because and i say unfortunately because we always ask to include an indigenous topic to the political agenda today it is being included but today when we speak in some sectors of the in argentinian police politics 
they speak about the indigenous people in order to discriminate. And the Mapuche people is identified as not Argentinian. The Kosha people are also disputed and they say that they are Bolivian so as to dispute them. And this uh, is uh, this has no precedent in terms of the four tiers of democracy. We have work on 10 recommendations on how to address these indigenous uh, topics. These are recommendations. We cannot force some media on how to treat those news, but this was worked on. This was consulted with orga indigenous organizations and 10 recommendations have been put forward. As regards climate change, we also have information. We have worked with the Ministry of the Environment specifically on a plan of communication with indigenous community communities as regards climate change. How many time, how much time do I have left? One one minute approximately, yes. So with regard with the justice system, I will give the floor here to the legal director so that he can very, very briefly give you some details on the interventions that we do with the indigenous communities in 15 seconds, very, very quickly. As the civil society knows, the program of legal services through the INAE and the national state creates an exchange that is very new to apply indigenous communities um, programs for the national and provincial systems, even in judicial processes through the INAE, the state um, appears to achieve legal uh, sentences and rulings so that it can be those can be suspended. Yes, uh, we didn't have time, so that was very brief. We don't hear the state anymore. Okay, very well. Then we will conclude this hearing by formally and respectfully requesting both parties to submit all information that you have at hand for complementing some supplementing the information that you have presented here today this is very important for the commission uh, to monitor the situation to to know what actions are to be implemented. So in my role as rapporteur for the rights of indigenous peoples, I propose to both parties to provide support by the Inter-American Commission to that, to, to, to have a mechanism to help to support a dialogue we speak uh, you speak about having worked on 10 recommendations the indigenous people's representatives point to the fact that though that communication does not exist those effective communication channels are not working so my proposal is offer is to offer the Inter-American Commission's technical support so that there can be an assessment of what you are working on as dialogue mechanisms between the state and the representatives of the indigenous peoples and the organizations that support the indigenous communities in these processes so as to so as to know 
what happens because the state acknowledges that there is a regressive narrative, regressive discourse that in and of itself is already valuable. So let's see how we can work on that situation so that we can reach constructive dialogue, a dialogue that allows us to address those issues that undoubtedly are um, harming democracy. This lack of recognition of the rights of the whole population, that is a mandate of the Commission to observe these in all countries of the region. So in order to, to build that bridge of communication, the Commission is open and available to provide uh, support and mechanisms that we can offer. Having said this, we will conclude this hearing. I don't know if my technical team has already taken the picture. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, we would like to ask all of you to look to the cameras so that we can take a picture of your participation. And of course, if someone would not like to uh, appear on Twitter or, or, well, it's not necessary for you to turn on your camera. So thank you for staying for this minute. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Goodbye.